Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Edge on Good News Sports. I'm your host, Glenn Allen. In the book, When Bad Christians Happen to Good People, the author says Christians turn people away from God with their hurtful actions. We expect Christians to be kind and loving. Whether we want to admit it or not, when they're not, it cuts deeply, especially when one of those people holds a position of trust. To talk about this and more, let's meet the Edge panel here on Good News Sports, beginning as we do each week with the host of the Drew Marshall radio program, Drew Marshall. How you doing, buddy? I'm so glad I'm first. Yeah, you are. You've got to be first somewhere. Uh, also joining us is Shelly Austin, the wife of former CFL quarterback Kent Austin. Hi, Shell. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Oh, wow. Well. Former Crossroads, or from Crossroads, we welcome also David Rutledge. Hey, Glenn. Good to see you. Thanks for taking Good the time out. Here. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, former WWE superstar wrestler, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Hey, Glenn. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm ready for a fight. Are you? Yeah. Let's do it. Good. I'm well, you know what? Here, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start out tonight. When you hear when good, when bad Christians happen to good people, what's the first thing that comes to your mind, Ted DiBiase? When bad things happen to good people, uh, you know what? Number one, not everybody. What everybody has to understand, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you're perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you know, you're born in a sinner, you die in a sinner. That line, it's yeah. grace. It's a bumper sticker. It, what do you mean it's a bumper <laughs> sticker? <laughs> just because you're a Christian, you're truth. not perfect? No, you're, you're not kidding me. Well, are you expected to be perfect because you're a Christian? Right, look, we all know there's a, the, the, pro the problem is not with God, it's with his fan club. Okay? Yep. But if I want to buy into this Jesus stuff, I'm going to look at the fan club. And they're, if they're a bunch of psycho whack jobs, I'm not buying into this thing. Oh, I, I totally agree. Right? And what, right. Would, you, what would you define as, I mean, there, there's a lot of, uh, one of the things that comes to mind for me is, in, in, and I certainly, I'm not sitting here saying that I'm high, high and mighty and I'm perfect. That's not what I'm saying. But there are, Amen. there are David Rutledge, there are, and Shelly, there are guys or, or people out on TV, the televangelists, that make our job of, of winning people to Christ very difficult because of how they come across and what they're talking about. And not all of it seems to be above board. Absolutely. I, I think that one of the key issues for me when you say, what do you think of when you hear bad Christian? You know, why do... Bad Christians happen to good people. Exactly. I, I think uh, the word hypocrisy is one of the, uh, you know, the big ones that immediately come to my mind. And you, you have people coming off as, with such facades. It's just so unreal. And, no authenticity. Exactly. And, Fake, and, phony. And I think that's what we have to uh, struggle through, fight through, when we're dealing with uh, someone who is searching, wanting to know more about uh, authentic faith, and, and yet they have these examples or these probably caricatures, uh, really, of what, of what Christianity is about. But, Ruddy, if people followed you around day by day with a microscope or a magnifying glass or whatever yeah, the heck yeah. you use, they'd think you're an idiot, too. Like, you know, when I think of... <laughs> I appreciate that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but when you You've say... You've talking you, to my family. Think for yourself, pal. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of when you think of uh, uh, bad, uh, bad Christians or whatever the, the, the spiel is? I think of a mirror, because I'm just a schmuck at doing yeah, but, this Jesus uh, thing. Yeah, but bad Christian, it's one thing to talk about being imperfect, it's a different thing when somebody says they're Christian and they take, they take advantage of you, they use that power of trust, and they use it to manipulate. People who manipulate scripture, manipulate to, 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 to do things that aren't right. And Shelley, I mean, Kent, has, uh, Kent played professional football for, for a number of years, uh, both the NFL and the CFL. Who's Kent? That's my husband. Oh, right, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Such a jerk. <laughs> that really hot guy. You have a husband? <laughs> you, 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 you see that? Yeah, no, yeah no. exactly. Sorry, sorry, honey. honey. Yeah. You, you, you see, uh, I mean, there's different, different players. That, what, you, you see what goes on in the background mm -hmm. uh, with, with for pro professional athletes. It's one thing with the athletes. What about the wives? Oh, uh, I think the wives are in much better shape. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this isn't the view. Because we're at home with the children. <laughs> we're at home with the children when they're on the road. No, I think that we have to go back to what Ted said. None of us are perfect, and we have to be careful not to judge each other either, but there is an exception. I think when you're in a position of leadership in the church or a professing Christian who a lot of people are looking up to and being led by, you're more accountable, period. And I think that that's very clear, um, that if you're misleading people, it's wrong. What's the scripture say about that, Ted? Definitely. Well, the Bible says that we're to be salt and light, that, you know, we're to, we're, we live in the world, but not of the world as, as Christians. I mean, you can't just, you know, eliminate yourself from, uh, from bad things and bad places. You know, I, I went back into the, to the wrestling world, you know, that's, you know, a dark place trying to be candle. 
Uh, but the Bible also says for someone who claims to be a believer that has heard the truth and they are, are sinning, they are, it says not even, to, not even to eat with them. I mean, so we need to rebuke people who are, are obviously not doing the right thing. <laughs> Look, we're obviously talking about the TV preachers, okay? Because the majority of them are just weird, honestly. Like, we're talking bizarre haircuts, million-dollar suits, budgets that, uh, that just do not, they just reek of... And the of, prosperity of, message. Oh, no, don't even get me started on that. Just, yeah. That's just crap. I want to get you crap? started. Yeah, it's good. It well, is you crap. just did. It's okay. That's unbelievable stuff, right? And are, are we, uh, I think the majority of us are very frustrated with, frustrated with that. Uh, and I think we need to do something, <laughs> I think we need to do something about it. But, but, but what comes what, first is... Who holds we them go, accountable? Well, no, but there's a group, I know of a group down in the States, the Trinity Foundation, that's trying to do that kind of stuff. And they get the W-5 and the 60 Minutes things, and they're feeding them information and IRS investigations, all that stuff. But we should be doing that. But they, honestly, there's a dumb what? sheep mentality. The flock of Jesus people are idiots just walking around going, you know, feed me, feed me, spoon but feed me. But at the same point, the same point is that someone might approach you and say, but how can you follow Jesus? You know, so-and-so, the guy on television. That's totally an opening that you can use to, to direct them the in deal. the right, the, yeah, yeah. The but what right about, way. What about the people who are, what about a, a person, a young, a, a person who has just come to know the Lord or is, is, is searching, is searching for that walk with God? And again, personal experience, you know, it, it was new to me. And uh, there's, there's part of the, the, the preacher who, who I got set up with in the beginning. There's parts of him that were uh, authentic and he, and he was trying. And, but then there's that other side and it was very it was spiritual abuse. I mean, it, was, it, it wasn't, mm. well, he was imperfect and he's making mistakes. No, yes, yeah. he was. A, he, he, knowingly, he knowingly had his own agenda and he hurt people. And he and, and when we did when we took it to him, nothing happened. When we took it to the to the higher ups, everything was shoved under the carpet. And that's the type of stuff we have to stop. As, as an individual, though, I mean, when you're you know, like, how do you deal with that? As an individual, as a Christian, you know, uh, the, the the Bible says, God says in the Word, you you search for me with all your heart, mm -hmm. and you will find me. You know, it's up to us as individuals to read the Word and to develop the relationship with Christ, and not to to just listen to everything some idiot on television has to say and blindly believe them. Gandhi said, I would have been a Christian if it had, had it not been for observing Christians because he saw people that weren't living uh, Christian lives. And Gandhi's mistake was he took his eyes off of Jesus Christ. That's it. That's, yeah. And that's the mistake the preachers are making that we're discussing. Well, Their eyes aren't on Jesus. But that's, on that's the mistake we're making as Jesus people. I think because God is invisible and we can't have that, hey, what's up, homie, everyday kind of relationship deal that we all think we can have with him, because that invisibility thing of God, we still like to put people in the position of representing God. And I think we pedestal people way too much. When I did Absolutely. the pastor thing yeah. in Australia, yeah, the first thing out of my mouth was, you put me in a pedestal, you're the idiot, not me. Yeah. I guarantee you I will disappoint you. Yeah. The, the, whole, the whole pedestal, the, the whole pedestal thing growing up who do we put on pedestals was it was it an actress was it an actor was it this person was it that person probably should have been mom and dad but a lot of times it's a professional athlete it's this person it's that person kiss i love kiss <laughs> they were up there man it's definitely the, the person that's in the public eye that has that place of public influence uh, but you know i have a hard time putting all of the onus and all the blame on that individual. As Ted was saying, we, we have to make a decision of faith based on the person of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, and I've, I mean, I pastored for 18 years. Mm -hmm. So there was a sense that, that, you know, there was people trying to put me on a pedestal. And you just don't want to live there because, you know, it, you can fall off and hurt yourself real quick. Oh, uh, yeah. But, but I've often said, hey, you're going you're gonna to find a problem with me. You look around this church, you're going to find problem with lots of people. It might hurt you and offend you. But I want you to try to find a problem with Jesus. We always got to get them back to that. And so, yeah, there's, there's bad Christians. And, and why do bad Christians happen to good people? Uh, because we're, so, we're, we're humans. So, so, so how do we take that? How do we take that, that thought? And, and what you're saying is, is 100% true. Because in walking in humility and, and, and trying, to, trying to explain that to someone who may not be a Christian, but I mean, you go to somebody or they come to you and they go, you know, for, well, first, first of all, I mean, you, you look at, the, again, the prosperity stuff, always wanting money and always wanting this, that, and the other thing. What do you say? What do you say to that person who's searching? 
but they're going, I, I don't want to do that. Or I don't, don't do that. Don't go to that church. It's a load of garbage. Don't do it. it look, the, the first time the word Christian was ever used was by the, uh, the pagans in Antioch, and it was used as a, to make fun of the Jesus people. And ever since then, I've been making fun of Jesus people because they're the easiest target. Like they're, they're, We are a weird group of people. And, and Jesus never called us to be Christians. He called us to follow Christ. Why, why, do, you say we're the easiest, why do you say that we're the easiest targets? Because uh, we preach one thing and live another, and that's going to be the reality of all. I think people want, but, but, I think people want to see, uh, it's not that they want to see moral purity from us, I think they want to see moral reality. You screw up, own it. Don't be uh, blame shifting onto, onto, you know, well, the Lord will forgive, and I'm so, you know, or just ignoring issues. We are great carpet sweepers, man. <laughs> yep. Better than any maid I've ever had, right under the carpet. I totally agree. I've never had a maid, I just want I to totally clear agree. <laughs> You, know, you want to be my mate? You know, I, I, after going on three, tri uh, three mission trips to, uh, no, I don't want to be your mate. <laughs> you know, I had my bodyguard, Virgil. <laughs> yeah, Virgil. That's, that's what, you know, what we're going we're gonna to pick this up after the break. We have to take a time out. We'll digest that one a little bit. <laughs> You're watching Good News Sports. We'll be back right after this. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Good News Sports. Glenn Allen, Drew Marshall. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> our, our court jester, Shelly Austin. David Rutledge and Ted DiBiase today asking the questions really well when bad, bad Christians happen to good people. Easy for me to say. Uh, we talked, and really where we're heading with this is, is, is talking about trying to find that leader who, who has that servant heart and, and, and who walks in humility. And you already touched on it. And, and when you make a mistake, own it. You know, I, I think one of the, when, when we look at the most recent uh, the, with Ted Haggard, you know, if he had said right from the beginning, you know what? Done deal. No, 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 no. That is totally wrong. If he had said from the beginning, you know what? I struggle with homosexuality. That church would have kicked him out in his keister. And he should be out in his keister, not just because he struggles with something, but because he has struggled with something for so long over such a period of time. And he has admitted that he has not had very much victory in that area. You don't be a pastor. You can work in a factory or do a good thing. I, I don't know, but you don't do the, the, the God leadership thing if you're struggling that hard with something and you're not getting a whole lot of victory. And the worst place in the world to come out come out with the whole I'm struggling with the gay thing is the church scene. Horrible place to come out. I feel bad for him, man. But you know what? It was kind of cool the way his church embraced him. And that was a good example. After he confessed, of, you mean? Yes. Yeah, so right, yeah. I mean, love him up. And you can also look at it from the opposite point of view that, sure, he really messed up and he should have come clean, but I think it was a he good... Didn't avoid, he, he tried to avoid it in right, the beginning. Right, but it was kind of cool how he finally came clean <clears throat> and the true Christians in the church but said, we love you and we want to help you, yeah. he came which clean is what Christ would do. You know, yeah. I, I've got, a, I've got an Absolutely. example. I've got an example. Uh, a, a, very, a very good friend of mine, a pastor... Uh, who was a, a leader of a big church, and he had an indiscretion with a woman he was counseling, and instead of waiting for it to be discovered and, and everything, that Sunday, I mean like two days after this thing happened, he stood up in the pulpit and he said, I have sinned against you, I have sinned against God, and I have sinned against my wife, and I can no longer be your pastor, I must step down. Good on. He confessed it, Absolutely. And, and he and his wife went through counseling, they're doing great again, he's, been, he's relocated to another church, uh, and, and his church really embraced him, and his church loved the fact that he was so honest about it and willing to confess it, that they actually wanted him back, and he said, he said no. He said, that won't work here. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, I don't know that the church has forgiven him. Yeah, but you, you mentioned, too, in a, in a previous program, talking about um, when, you, when, you got, uh, when, when you got caught in, in adultery, you know, your wife asked, are, are you sorry that you got caught, or are you actually sorry for what you've done? Yeah, that's right. what I was talking about with the Ted Haggard. Yeah, the, and, and the, whole, <laughs> the whole bit is, is I just wish the... For so many years, I, I, live, I, I lied when I didn't have to. As an alcoholic and a, and a, and a cocaine addict, I lied when I didn't have to. And learning, you know, becoming, getting clean and sober and then becoming Christian and, and, and just over a number of years, learning that, you know what, the truth, being able to look at somebody and say, you know what, oh, as much as I really rather not be, tell the truth right now, getting that out and, and by practicing that, and that, that has such a... a a great ripple effect, whereas, of course, the negative one was through the lies, because you end up getting caught anyway. Glenn, why, not, why not step to the plate in the beginning? And on, the other, on one of the other shows we were talking about, about, you know, as parents with our kids, about messing up, making a mistake, and being honest enough to, and, and vulnerable enough to show your vulnerability. 
So when, you, when I show my vulnerability, vulnerability I can't say that word either, to, to my kids, uh, number one, they forgive me, and, and they trust me even more after that. Yeah. And I think that, it's the that, same that's thing. The, the issue is humility in all of that, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. You can't, that's you can't get to, to that say. place yeah. unless there's, there's a humbleness, a brokenness that comes. Pride and arrogance always tries to hide and conceal and not admit. Right. And, and when people know you, like when you've been caught and you don't, don't confess, I mean, people resist that. Who has the hardest time with pride and humility? Males. If we had more female preachers or female leaders, and I know some of y'all freak out and you shouldn't have a female preacher, whatever, leave that one alone. But if we had more women running the show, you think we'd have as much yahoos out there getting caught and busted and shacking up and meet, meeting not. their secretaries or whatever? I don't think so. I really don't. I think women have a, have a better issue with, with, uh, with the humility pride Shelley. thing. Well, yeah, you would be one of those people, wouldn't you? So what would you say? I think that men are driven in a different way than women, and women are more apt to be nurturing and keep their Pants bowels. Zipped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, but, you know, there's statistics that women are cheating just as much as men. Well, so. yeah, men got to be cheating with someone. <laughs> Well, but I do think that I wanted to say one thing. Yeah, go. Our preacher um, actually did a, a sermon about this, and there were three things I remember him saying about finding a church and having a pastor. Don't check your brain at the door, which is God has given us all common sense mm -hmm. and, and an innate sense of right and wrong. Don't, there's nothing wrong with questioning leadership. Keep your clothes on would be a good one bing, when bing, you go bing. to church. When you, especially when you go to church. <laughs> <laughs> Although that would keep me awake during the sermons but, a lot more. I mean, he, everyone was butt naked. He cited examples of pastors You're assuming, but <laughs> saying you have to have sex with me to come to church here. I mean, there yeah, are stupid, leaders. idiotic things going on. But that's fringe stuff. I mean, I think the majority issues we're talking with pastors, like overall, we're talking a smaller minority of, okay. uh, right? What it's is kind it? Of deal. It's, it happened. Right. And the other thing was, focus on Jesus and make sure they're teaching the Bible. If, if the pastor's not trying to be humbly like Jesus, you're in the wrong place. And, and, and again, I'll, I'm just, I don't want to harp on this because we've already touched on it. There are people who are very good at twisting it and manipulating the word. That's why you've got to read your Bible yourself instead of believing and what that person And again, that's says. all very well and good for, for us. Somebody who's new and they're vulnerable. Yeah. They can buy a Bible. But, but they still have to be taught and they're being taught by a wolf in sheep's clothing in some cases and yeah. that really ticks me off. Um, as, as we sit here as Christian uh, men and women, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> have, you, have you ever been hurt by a leader? Have, have you ever been hurt or let down by somebody who you looked up to? Absolutely. Well, who, like, who hasn't? Yeah. Okay. Do you have another question? Oh, that's a, just a come on. We've all, you know, well, how did you deal Jesus with it? Jesus or guy or a Buddhist or Hindu or how, Harry, how did Harry you, Carey How did you deal with it? I mean, we grow up and we, and we think all these... Are these <laughs> I'll show you how. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have a little strategy. We have we have the the athletes. You know, I I think back to me growing up, and it was those athletes. And then finding out when I get older, I mean, the the bubble got burst. But coming into the you know coming into the church, and you have those those people that you might look at. I'm trying to get I, I'm trying to get below the surface. Actually, how it felt, not like oh well it happened because that's just garbage. But you had an extreme case feel? of abuse. I mean, most people don't have that much of a hurt. I mean, I don't. Were you I abused by have... Jesus, guy? Pardon? Were you abused, were you, were you, Spiritually, yeah. Yeah, okay, so whoever abused you was a Jesus person. Is that what you're saying? They're the, Christian, the spiritual Christian? abuse, yeah. The spiritual abuse, oh, okay. yeah. okay, all right, all right. So, As, I've been And I was new. It's I was wild. a new Christian. But we're all abused in life. Like, so you're saying suck it up? I'm saying mature and dive into your Bible and surround, you have to surround yourself with real Jesus followers. See, now we're getting somewhere. Now, now we're getting somewhere. So you walk into a church. Jesus somebody followers. says, you know what? You, you, you go to church. So the person goes to church, some good people around, and they think what they're hearing is, is good. They're new. Okay? You have to learn. It's a big, a lot of pages. Okay? So you walk in there, and you're trying to trust. There's people, you know, you're trying to trust the person at the front but of the room. you don't trust blind people. Well, there's, other, there's also people who are, who are yearning for that. And that's a lot of these people, some, not all, are at the front of the church looking for people like that. So are you saying, how do you, how do you watch You're out for... You're scaring for, me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, still, I, I still think it goes back to what I said initially. 
Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Get into the Word of God. Study the Word of God. The Bible says, you search for me with all your heart. It says that the Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us. And, and it's, it's in some cases, you know, uh, hey, I was misled. As a, I had a very childlike faith in God, but I was in the church and I was obviously misled about a lot of things. But uh, through the years and through studying and, 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 and learning about, I have to have a relationship with Jesus and and. and and looking into it myself, and not only studying the Word of God, but studying, studying history and all these other things, you know, I, I taught myself. But and, it, and, and the key role of, of some good mentors. Exactly. Not, not necessarily an institution. We're talking a lot about church. Mm-hmm. We're talking a lot about pastors. Let's put you from a different angle for a second. The guy, what about, you know, the, the guy who's experiencing a bad Christian happening to this good people mm-hmm. uh, across the street? Uh, across the hall, in, in the cubicle, in the plant, mm-hmm. and he's getting a guy who professes to be a Christian. Mm-hmm. What kind of cubicle are we talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> the office cubicle. Okay, <laughs> check. You know what I mean? Like long before they ever get to a church or don't ever get to a church, they're dealing with the bad Christian in their everyday life. Right. Mm-hmm. So stupid neighbors. Exactly. Oh, those people are idiots over there. Yeah, Our neighbors they, they, and they're Jesus people. They, they see them going to church, going to church yeah. carrying yeah. their Bible, yeah. and yet they're just absolutely. They, let their, they let their cat come and visit your backyard. Just things like they won't get to the no, church. No, you have issues. <laughs> I hate cats. They won't get to the church to get the abused neighbor? there <laughs> yep. because they're being abused across the fence. Or You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, I, I think we need to deal with the fact that like, bad Christians happen to good people, and it's not just in spiritual leadership. Yeah. In yep. Great, it it great, happens all the way around. It happens. And, and, and the, common, the common denominator, just before we go to break here, is trying to, trying to live it out in that humility. Authenticity. Um, yeah, we do. We have, we have to take another break back right after this. Welcome back to the show. Truth is, sometimes Christians hurt people. If you mess up, be humble and admit it. If you get hurt, let the person know it's not okay. But most importantly, focus on Jesus. He will never let you down, even if his followers do. 